everybody. It's Mary Beckman, and here we are. It's Metaphysical Meltdown at 4.15. Wow, I hope everybody remembered, and I hope everybody's here to listen to this beautiful person. So Tracy Kelly Williams is here today, and she will be talking about the Akashic Records, of which I know very little. So uh, I research people that I'm going to be speaking to and I get lots of info and I got about halfway with her and something came up. So uh, I'm hoping to have good questions. So that on the topic of questions, if you are here with us and you have a question for this beautiful human, you can ask her. You can also ask me. I will ask, I will um, work on you if you want me to. Um, so everybody happy solstice a couple days later um beautiful solstice oh my gosh had the best time outside it was really lovely it rained sorta and was was just beautiful all weekend sometimes <laughs> here mm -hmm. in the pacific northwest so happy solstice to you guys happy father's day to any fathers watching uh it was the dog's birthday happy birthday chief beckman oh my gosh so this is galactic week everybody we made it and uh, I'm pretty excited about Galactic Week. And Tracy is here, of course, to kick it off. There's no lie that all the people could converge on this week for a reason. And so today we're talking again about the Akashic Records. Tomorrow is James Gilliland from the Isetti Ranch. And he's going to be talking about disclosure and the ranch and all kinds of what happens there. It's a place like no other. He has so much activity there, you won't believe it. And then uh, the next day, Wednesday, is Derek Condit. And he will be talking about disclosure and the space program, uh, secret space program, and uh, all kinds of stuff. Ascension, I mean, it's just going to be great. Then the next day, which is Thursday, is Todd Rolson, and we will be asking him about some similar things and uh, bringing in all his knowledge about the Ascension process and what he's been talking about on his chats on Sunday. He's had maybe five or six of them, and I don't I don't miss those. They're pretty great. So I'm hoping that you guys are watching Todd on Sunday at 11 a.m. and drinking your coffee and hanging out with him because he just spews out all kinds of amazing stuff. You can see he's just channeling the whole time. Awesome. And so he will be talking about, I'm hoping, the higher self and whatever. So whatever everybody wants to talk about, of course, I'm cool with it. So we're going to be asking Tracy tons of questions about um, the Akashic Records today. Uh, just want to let you know that I appreciate you guys tuning in, and I also would ask you, please, if you have a moment, please go to Hands of Light. That is our group, and Mukherjee and I started that group a while back, and it's all about praying and, and doing healing on folks if they are open to it. If they give us the okay, we can send out some nice, smooth juju, mojo, rather, and uh, and I'm praying uh, today and asking everybody to please pray a little um prayer and send some good healing energy to my friend Penny, who is um, who had a fall. So she had a traumatic brain injury. Injury. So I'm asking please to uh, light her up, folks, because she's, she's doing much better uh, and still needs some help. So uh, Penny in Oregon. Thanks, everybody. Okay, without any further messing around, we're going to go right to <laughs> Tracy, if you are ready. I am so, ready. <laughs> welcome. Thank you so much for coming. This is round two for Tracy, or is it? Yeah, two. Thank round two. You. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you so much for having me. Um, this is the kind of stuff, this Akashic Records and stones are, yeah. you know, gemstones are kind of the things I like to geek out over. So <laughs> this is near and dear to my heart. So, um, so one of the things that I do as a practitioner is assist other people in clearing um, things from their Akashic Records, from their soul record. Um, the Akashic Records, um, otherwise known as the Akash or Akasha, or some other words you may hear used are sort of like a, it's almost like a, a hall of records is the way I like to think of it. Mm -hmm. it's on a different dimensional plane of existence than we are here currently in a place where time is nonlinear. So when we are not in, incarnated in a body for us, most of us, time is nonlinear. So here we're in linear time. So it can be kind of difficult to, um, to um, pull together in your brain or to understand how you could have multiple or simul simultaneous timelines happening or lifetimes happening. Um, the Akashic Records are most well known for being able to access past life records for us, but we can also access our divine soul blueprint, which is uh, who we are energetically at soul level. So how we were created and constructed, which helps us um, know how better to manifest things in our life because it helps us understand how to be more in um, alignment with our own divinity. Mm -hmm. um, but we can also access um, other information 
as well. So any blocks and restrictions that are that are on us from prior um, past life um, experiences uh, that we've carried over into this lifetime that might be um, hindering us from moving forward with whatever our desired plan is, um, as well as other information about um, our soul group of origination, which uh, some people might know um, as a star group. Um, everyone that is incarnated into a body um, originated somewhere. Mm -hmm. And most of us did not originate on Earth. Earth was not our primary incarnation. And so that also gives us more information, um, knowing that and knowing about the people that we were when we were first incarnated um, can give us more information about how we manifest or how our, um, our alignment works in this reality, in this 3D reality. Um, okay. okay. So I have, a, I have a question for you. Sure. So over the years, um, I usually get my information from who knows where, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, over the years, I had a, a small little snippet of understanding what the Akashic records actually are. And somehow or another, I must've heard the word halls of record. Mm -hmm. Somehow or another, mm -hmm. in the beginning, when I would go in there to do something, it looked like a hall with mm -hmm. some open doors. And somehow I found my own door and I went in there and it looks like it looks. Mm -hmm. Well, these days doesn't look like that at all. So mm -hmm. my question is, does it change as you grow? It can. It changes depending on your frame of reference and your life experience. Okay. So um, the Hall of Records for me also used to be like that. It used to be that I would I would step into um, a place where it would be shelves and shelves of books. Mm -hmm. um, but as I started to learn the Akashic work, I would I would go in and have to identify a person instead of asking for their book. I would go to a big screen where I would pick up their thread, a ah. very specific thread. Um, now, when I access the Akashic Records, I'm often going to a computer database okay. where I punch in their information and it pulls up the file that I need to look at. So um, it, it does change and it, it can be um, based on anyone's perception. It can be, you know, the middle of a field. It doesn't have to be a hall. You just see, tend to call it a hall of records because we're used to the library. Exactly. Record, you know. That's so interesting that you would say that because uh, it looked like it was bombed out there for a while. And I think that was because I was going through so much and I'd have to dig through the rubble to look at something. Now, when I go in there, it's a room of light and a little cash machine. <laughs> it looks like a cash machine. And I just say, can I just look at their blueprint? You know, and they'll give me the blueprint and I'll scan it and get the info. Yeah. So, it's, <laughs> so how long have you been studying this? Um, I have been accessing, well, I've been working with past life um, theory um, and regression and, and looking at, at those types of things um, for 20 years. Oh my gosh. But this particular modality that um, I have partnered with at this time, uh, about five years. Oh my gosh. Okay. And so for folks who want to know, mm -hmm. and I'm just saying hello to all my beautiful people. Lloyd is on and Tanya. And Tanya, we'll, we'll be talking about the star group in a minute when we get in there. We're just digging through the the beginning right now and there's kelly the pet psychic and christy hi christy and karen and nancy and oh gosh lots of people there's pam and ingy angela stephanie so lots of folks on already so just know that she's going to dig into star groups where we all came from the akashic records and she's going to answer questions so if you have questions you can pop on again remember we only have a certain amount of time for questions and sometimes since i'm in a few different um uh dimensions I might miss your question <laughs> and boy I have a question for you too Tracy uh, at, near the end when we get in the the uh, the meat of this whole thing but can you tell us for somebody who's never done it before what's mm -hmm. Akashic Records 101 how do you get in there and where is it anyway ah well because it's it's uh, <laughs> where is it it's um it's sort of a, it's we access it through our um our consciousness our higher consciousness so we're accessing it from a different dimensional existence. So our thoughts are fourth dimensional and our, our aura is more of a fifth dimensional level. Our, um, our physical body is in the third dimension. And so we're accessing it through um, the fourth, fifth dimension. So we kind of go that way to the Akashic Records um, because physicality is different. It's not necessarily, it's not a physical place. It's, um, I guess, if you will, the one way to, to, to say it here, even though it does exist, would be to say imaginary. <laughs> So that would be um, most accurate is that we're imagining that we're going there, even though we are actually accessing, we need to have the belief when we're accessing the records that that is where we're going and the information that we're, we're getting is accurate. How anyone can access their own record. 
not everyone can access everyone else's record, but we can all, all we all always have access to our own record um, and more than likely to our children's records as well. Um, how one might access the records would be to sit in a meditative space and imagine that you are going to the records hall and asking for your specific record, but going there with a specific question. Okay. So if you're having some difficulty um, with manifestation, you know, manifestation in your life, or you know, you need you need a, um, you have questions about a career choice. There's something big going on. You're going to go in there with this very specific question and ask for your record. You can always ask a guide once you get in there to help you. So ask for um, a records guide to guide you through the process of finding your record. Um, once I access the records, I actually come back out. I use the pendulum and I ask specific questions. So I'm not actually visually reading from um, a tome in the records hall. Mm -hmm. uh, getting the information, it's kind of being downloaded for me. But you can, you can use that visualization. You can ask for the answer in dreaming or ask for a dream. You know, we talked about dreaming before. That's another way to do that, um, okay. get the answers. And if you do just have a curiosity about, about a past life, then that's totally okay to access your own record to ask questions about that as well. Very good. We'll get into that a little bit further. I just want to make a statement here. So again, I see some little frowny anger faces coming by. And I would love whoever does that to go ahead and tell me why that's coming up. So as you know, each time I have someone on, this is their opinion. It's different opinions all the time. And I have a lot of friends, I'll tell you. I do. I love and treasure each one of them. I can tell you they all think differently. I love that. I choose my friends because they're beautiful, they're interesting, they're smart, and they understand what they're talking about. So whoever that is, I would just like you to come out from undercover to take a look at why you are sending that energy out. So I clear metaphysical meltdown. I clear my page. I clear this time. And I'm actually saying, you need to tell me why you feel that way. And you know that I will love you but I also don't allow anything negative because what it does is it brings down the whole thing. So unless you're willing to talk about why you are doing that, and maybe it's a slip of the finger, I'm gonna give you a break here. So that being said, we're gonna carry on. All right, very good. Awesome. Just always good to call people out because I'm not into negativity. And I was thinking maybe it might be a, a slip of the finger, but it keeps coming through. And I do, I do nothing without clearing myself, without making sure that everybody who comes forward is clear and sort of just puts in a, I just put in a platform of love and peace and understanding. And perhaps something that Tracy and I said today is not your understanding of the Akashic Records, or maybe it's not your understanding of something, or who knows, people, people put stuff on me all the time, you know? I had a little thing I said on Facebook the other day about, uh, about having some energy sent towards me. That's about a third of the essay, there's a lot more. There's a lot more about psychic attacks, etc. And if somebody is wanting to psychically attack or to bring negativity, I'd ask you to, I think, let's see, it's about 4.30. Uh, you know, why don't maybe people go play Animal Planet or go watch Geraldo Rivera or something because I don't have any use for that. So I'm drawing the line right now, okay? Okay, I'm going to pass it back over to Tracy who's going to talk about nothing but the Akashic Records and I'm going to get down off my soap bubble box, okay? Thank you. Okay, so, um, so since that came up, I'm kind of wanting to discuss for a second soul contracts. Okay. Um, because this might be one thing that leads people to feel um, negatively about this type of, of clearing work. Um, and it also involves the term um, spiritual bypassing. So when we talk about soul contracts, um, so in the Akashic Records and karma in general, um, we have choice. And so every choice we make either leads to um, a negative or a positive consequence. 
And there is a theory out there that I've heard from other practitioners that, and I'm going to tell you that this, this doesn't really resonate with me, but this theory that's out there is that if we are responsible for every single choice that we make, then the bad things that happen to people are their fault. And that's not necessarily true. There are so many factors in the way that things come together. And so we might have a contractual obligation before we get incarnated into a body to have a certain type of experience. We may have the contract may be left over from a past life. It may be something that we agreed to in our blueprint for this lifetime. Um, but just because we may have made a contract like that does not mean that we have to keep or hold the experience through the entire lifetime. And it also doesn't mean that we can just turn around and say as practitioners or as light workers that I am now absolved from having to have anything to do with that experience for that other person because it's their fault because they chose it. That's crap, right? So I just kind of want to put that out there just in case that might be a little bit of it. I mean, I, I've seen it. I haven't seen it as much um, recently of people doing that or saying, well, it's, it was your choice. And so if you're um, a person of color, you chose that experience and, and therefore I don't have to help you out with anything because you're supposed to be here to have the experience. It's crap. Mm. So um, those of us that are here right now as light workers innately know that, but it's hard because we forget, right? We come into this, into this incarnation and we have, um, anamnesis, essentially. We forget what we were before and what we agreed to before. But those of us that were sent here, were sent here for reason to help uphold the energy or bring in the new energy and bring in the new vibration. And we need to actually be working to help resolve the issues, which will help raise the vibration, not just throwing energy at it. So there's a two part, there's mm -hmm. two parts to that. Um, there's the raising the vibration by absolutely throwing the energy at it, but there's also the resolution that needs to happen. Um, and the change that needs to happen that's part of the action or 3d sequence of events absolutely so good grief i'll i'll can only use myself as an example i have been clearing myself for years you can peel the onion or do whatever dissect the tomato however you want to put it you can do it and and i would just say there's so many unique and awesome new things that one can do there's things where you you say re repeating words and you're working with crystals and you this thing is amazing. This is my new wand. It clears the heck out of anything. And so that's why I just brought it up. I thought, you know, this is a great way to clear some negative old energy. But yeah, she's right. She's absolutely right. Because why wouldn't we want to run it down and see where the unhooking, see what the problem was, mm -hmm. see where the unhooking needs to be and release? Because why just put a little Band-Aid over it? Why don't we go right to what's bothering somebody and take a look at it? So I'm all about the love and light, but these days, no, let's work on it. Let's fix it. Yeah. So we, we need both. Absolutely need both yep. pieces of that to, um, to make these big changes to, um, to do the work that many of us were sent here to do um, as practitioners, as light workers, as, as humans this time around. So, mm -hmm. so that would be, um, that would just be a little bit about that. Um, so we do often have soul contracts just to talk about that. We, we may come in um, and want to have an experience. I mean, I'm going to give this example. So it's one of the things I look at is, is sort of like life lessons, only they're not, um, they're not a lesson that you have to learn to get to the next level, because as we kind of talked about at the beginning, there are no levels. There's no different levels. So perhaps someone came here wanting to experience love. And when they came in, they started at the lowest vibration of um, not having anyone to love them. Mm -hmm. Well, they don't have to spend the entire, their entire lifetime experiencing love from the low vibration they absolutely can choose to move up the vibration to say, I don't want this lesson anymore um, to resolve it. So I've learned what it's like to not have love, to have no one love me, to feel like I have no love for myself. And now I choose to change that and shift that. And I now find that I have self-love and now that I, I love myself, other people also love me. Um, and I can see that, that that's the case. And so we may have different um, experiences like that, that, um, that come up with life lessons they often have a vibration. So in that case, they use the example of love, but um, power is another one experiencing power. So you could come in and experience power from a place of having power and having power over people and abuse that. Yes. Of course, abusing that gives you negative consequences eventually, and that may flow over into a karmic debt into the next lifetime when you incarnate again. But it doesn't mean you're a negative soul. So there's all sorts of nuances. Absolutely, we're not, we're beautiful, we're beautiful light. Spark mm -hmm. of God. Yeah. Yeah. 
And again, I will uh, talk to anybody about this at any time. So if somebody's having a problem, just go ahead and get with me and I will help you. Awesome. So what are some of the ways that let's go, let's go to the star seed thing because I don't want to miss anybody's question. Yeah, yeah. So you mentioned early on how to find your star group. I don't want to miss that. We can come back to more about the, the records, but let's not yeah. miss that. Yeah, absolutely. So um, you can actually find this information in your record. And so what you're looking for is your, um, your soul group of origination. So what, what group from what group were you originally incarnated? What is your, your base level soul? I mean, it's, it's who you are, it's your core. And um, many of the, the people that we, that we hear about as star seeds, many of those groups are here right now incarnated, which would be Mintakins, um, Pleiadians, Solarians, occasionally you find um, uh, Syrians are here mm-hmm. incarnated, um, people from Maldek, Mars, uh, Procyon, um, as well as some of the angelic realms also are often incarnated here. Um, there are a few that we don't see them here very often, but the Pleiadians started coming in. You may, you may um, the Pleiadians and um, Syrians started coming in um, as early in large groups as early as the 1950s, and they were the original indigo mm-hmm. children coming in here in large groups. Um, different groups have, um, of course, different characteristics. So myself, I'm a Pleiadian soul group, and we tend to be big picture people. So in, in practical life, that means that I come up with a great idea, and then I completely lose it before I get to the end of all the steps to make it happen. So for me, I'm actually married to a Syrian, and Syrians like to get things done. <laughs> and so they're kind of like the, they're builder type people. So they're the co- construction people in terms of like engineering and, and just being able to help people with systems. So they especially like to redo systems and make them work better. Right. Okay. So, um, so the way that we work is that I come up with a really great idea and he helps me make it happen because he'll keep me on track with the steps. Um, and I have this, this double, if you follow astrology at all. So I'm a Pleiadian who mm-hmm kind of gets the big idea, but I'm also a Sagittarian who gets the big idea. And I'm a Sagittarian ascendant, so I also get the big idea, big idea, and then I have a hard time with the (laughs) follow-through, honestly, you know, so that's, um, it's, it's very, it can be very helpful, you know, to know your, who your partner is too. (laughs) Okay, yeah, so he's a Syrian, huh? Awesome, so there are, I've met lots of Syrians, lots of Arcturians, Orions, Mm -hmm. you know, lots of angels around here, lots of elementals. And Mm -hmm. uh, every once in a while, I will meet somebody whose guide is somebody I cannot distinguish. That happened to me the other day. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) you know, read the heart field. Are you, are you good? Do you need to stay right here with me? Or do you need to exit the matrix? That kind of thing. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So there's a couple questions. Do you want to take a look? Sure. Yeah, let's go back to the beginning. If I miss anybody, you can tell me. Folks out there, beautiful people. Okay. So Tanya, it looks like uh, you would like to know this, her star group. So Tanya, can you tell Tanya Michelle her star group? And sometimes we're mutts, kids. I mean, I, I'm, I'm three. Yeah, so. for sure. Um, yeah, there's such a thing as, um, there is such a thing in the way that I, I read that actually helps me determine that also more than mm-hmm. one star, you know, star group. So, um, Tanya, are you able to give me your birth date? Oh, okay. Let's so see. I can identify you in the record. I apologize. I forgot that. So if anyone was asking a question. Sure. Ingi too. Ingi and Nancy, whoever comes up with the, um, the date first, please. So please to say your birth date. Barbara also go ahead and say your birth date and she will she will take a look. Yeah, Kathleen wants to know where she originates too. So start okay. at the beginning, everybody, and um, Tracy will take a look. I think it's fascinating. What I do is I take people up to the platform and we meet the family. I learned that oh, from my cool. teachers. Yeah, so that they can meet their family and that they can, you know, because sometimes people, if they have a lot of galactic in them, they'll feel very alone. You know, when you come yeah. in earth, this frequency 
basically stink sometimes, you know, earth is hard, can be hard, even though it's so beautiful here. So, okay, here we go. Here we go. Now we've got a few. Okay, awesome. So for Janet, uh, Janet starts, she wants to know her star group. It's 1017. That's her birthday. Do you want the whole thing? Um, yeah, just because I can. Okay, 1017, 1951 for Janet and her star, star group. Okay. Okay. Angela is saying, wow, that's awesome. I'm surprised we haven't done that for you. <laughs> it's pretty fun. Up you go. And family comes yeah. in. <laughs> oh, yeah, you've got lots of people. Probably this will take us through the time. So everybody, this is pretty much it for, I, we can't ask that much of Tracy here. I might be able to help a little bit. And there's cousin Barry. You don't write, you don't call. Love you. <laughs> Barry's busy. Give Linda a love for me. So I love it when my cousins come on. So happy to see you. Don't forget everybody, it's Galactic Week. So keep tuning in, okay? Okay. So for Janet, um. Janet, I'm getting for you um, the soul group for Mintaka or Mintakan. Um, and I may not have um, all of the, the various soul groups that all of you know about as star seeds either. So keep in mind that I'm going to say Mintaka, but I'm going to give you sort of the energy of, of Mintakans. And um, that energy is of a people that um, they had a utopian society. It was a water world. They're very drawn to water, but they might be afraid of um, dark water, like dark ocean or deep ocean um, lakes and things like that. Um, they love to see the best in people, and that can kind of sometimes be a little bit difficult because they're seeing the best in people always, and, and um, people don't always act the way that um, they're perceived by Mintakans. So that can lead to um, some disruptions in relationships where we've believed we've, we've got this, you know, really great person when we really we do but um, they're not acting or behaving in the way that um, we can see that they could be um, and making actions like that so um, and Mintakan's home world currently is uninhabitable so that makes them feel a little bit alone and disconnected from some people until they find other like-minded people and where is that system I don't have that specific okay. information. When when you clued in, I could see blue all around you. No wonder if it's a water world. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay, so we want to do, I'm gonna go backwards, everybody. So Carolyn Del Posey, 12, 16, 51, looking for her star group. Okay. Thank you, my love. Very good. Well, this is awesome. Everybody think up stuff that you would like to ask our wonderful guests that are coming up this week. Todd Rolson, Derek Condit, and James Gilliland. So James will be talking about the Assetti Ranch, if you've never been. So that is a place to go if you want to have lots of contact with the galactic family. <laughs> okay. So for Carolyn, I have Arcturian. Okay. And so Again, so um, <clears throat> that makes sense. Consciousness. What's that? She's a healer. Yes, and that's what I was going to say. Spiritual healing is um, in our, a big Arcturian um, thing. It's sort of their thing. They have a great deal of insight to share. Um, often quiet people, um, sort of observers, but um, they're influencers behind things. So you may find them at at the heart of um, a big project. They're just sort of like the behind the scenes type of people holding the space or holding the energy for that. Again, spiritual healers or spiritual wisdom people. Um, and they don't always understand existing social structures. So that's really hard for them to deal with. Um, meaning social, so, social constraints, things that we all agree to that don't make sense. Um, which can be, you know, one side organized religion or marriage or educational system and things like that. Um, but they've really got a lot of great spiritual wisdom and insight to share, for sure. Absolutely. All right. So Ingi is January 2nd, 
if you see me shuffling around over here, I've got um, a, a dousing sheet over here that I'm working with. So that's what oh. I'm doing. <laughs> so I'm wiggling all around in my seat. <laughs> I made one of those for myself last night. I wanted to know something very specific. So if anybody wants to know what she's doing while she's doing it, I'll explain. When I do that, if I have, like, say I'm tired and I want to know what's going on, I will put something at the top like, did I eat it? Am I drinking enough? You know, am I just really tired? You know, mm -hmm. give yourself all kinds of things that could be wrong. That's if you're just extremely tired, cannot figure it out, or you have an extremely, conf you know, convoluted situation, you can figure it out easy with your pendulum. Pendulum will go right to what, the, what it is. It's always, did I eat it? <laughs> Oh, I feel terrible. Did I eat it? Yeah. And also while Tracy is um, figuring this out for you, uh, I will tell you that I also figured out what the situation with the energy was, not anything to do with any of us. And it actually got adjusted. So oh, good. there you go. That's good. Okay. So this is one I'm just referencing my notes on here. So Thank you. I got um, Blueprint Technician, which is, um, this is a soul group that this, in this modality, we've got some interesting things that this doesn't specifically tell you where, you know, which um, planet or system that you come from. So um, please jump in, Mary, if you, if you're getting something on that. Oh, okay. I'll um, take a look. As a Blueprint Technician. So, but this is something that Blueprint people do. So Blueprint people, um, help other people create their blueprints on a soul level. So they're, they're the engineers of the blueprint soul group. So um, they are sort of the practical implementers of um, the person's vision. So if we have a soul that is creating their, um, their blueprint for the lifetime that they're planning to incarnate into, this um, technician is the person who's, who's helping them with the practical implementation of that. Um, rational, highly men mentally oriented, studious. Um, sometimes they have difficulty with um, emotionality or people being overly emotional. Mm -hmm. but, um, they're definitely more functionally oriented towards um, how, how do things work. So they make really excellent engineers, doctors, scientists, software developers, or business people. Um, but they could be creating something also like um, an avenue of spirituality. You know, a lot of us here are light workers. Maybe they're creating a brand new um, modality or something mm -hmm. like that also to bring onto the timeline. Hmm. If I remember correctly, Ingi, are you angelic galactic? I know you're pretty galactic. I wonder if you're angelic galactic. I wonder if you were some of those first angels, maybe. I don't know. I'm not getting it exactly. Anyway, she's awesome. We love her. <laughs> okay. Thank you. So this is for Jamie, J-A-I-M-E. Okay. And her birthday is 8575. Okay. Thanks so much for coming on, everybody. I sure do appreciate it. It takes a moment for Tracy to uh, understand what uh, star system people are from. That's what she is doing. And a person who is a, um, go ahead, hon, if you're ready. Oh, yes. Um, for Jamie, I'm also um, receiving the information uh, from your record that you were um, originally incarnated, incarnated as Mintakin. So to recap, that was a utopian water world um, that is no longer inhabitable. Um, people from Mintaka or who are Mintakan um, often have this really great ability to see the best in people. So they can see who they, who they are um, at their highest level. And that can be both a challenge and a blessing. So mm -hmm. you can give people lots of great encouragement to get them to that high level. Um, and, but sometimes there's disappointment with people. Um, they're very drawn to water. Um, very, very Mintakan people, if I didn't say this before, have kind of happy-go-lucky, love to be in nature. Just uh, everything cool all the time. <laughs> that's <laughs> very sure. easy going. So. so next time I talk to you, Jamie, I have to tell you about the bristle cones. <laughs> She'll know what I'm talking about. Okay. And uh, Carolyn is saying, um, 
Yeah, so Ingi definitely is galactic. I was getting a little bit just now though, something about angels. So I was trying to balance that with what I know about you to be galactic, but it's just, you have that way. So I'm just saying somewhere, and you know, we've never all just lived in Tacoma our whole life. You know what I'm saying? We bounce around. Family gets around. And so we have different little particles and pieces of, of these realms. And so uh, we aren't all one thing. So just letting you know, it's kind of a mishmash. You know, you, if you've ever seen a wiener dog whose mom was a collie, that's kind of <laughs> that's what I'm talking about <laughs> on, on, a base, on a basic level. Um, okay, so we are going to uh, Nancy, 1-4-1955. Okay. Okay, so. Ah, uh, she says, I feel I am angelic. Resonates with her. Maybe Elohim, maybe. I'm not sure. I just kind of had a little picture in my brain when I was figuring that out. It's hard kind of to do what we're doing on the fly, though, especially um, you're going into many parts of your brain when this is going on, especially when I'm watching the questions and seeing what else is up. Okay, so Nancy, I did get um, Mission Realm for you, which is kind of akin to what um, Mary's been talking about with um, with almost more of a, an angelic, angelic realm. Um, mission Walmers come from the Andromeda galaxy. So um, they came here specifically to help resolve negativity on the planet in whatever form that manifests for them or that, that comes up. Um, they have a little bit of difficulty because uh, the third dimensional reality is so different when we incarnate into a body and they, they really weren't used to it. That they've had some difficulty um, with the human experience. And so they may feel a little bit disconnected from that or difficult difficulty with their bodies and being embodied all the time. But they're definitely here for, um, for this really great purpose. They're gentle, loving souls, amazingly amazing listeners, um, lots of great intelligent and very gifted at supporting others from a place of acceptance and non-judgment. Beautiful. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, our next uh, lovely person is Vicki, 928-1962. Okay. And Ariane, if you want to ask a question, she's looking at what star system you're from. That would be pretty interesting to know <laughs> if you want to see if she gets some info on you. Thanks so much, everybody, for popping on and waiting. It does take a minute for we're just humans, even though we're really not. <laughs> See the collie dog description from a moment ago. <laughs> hey, so Vicki, um, Nihal. So this is another group that we're um, incarnating here to. Um, to help out and were um, originally um, some of our indigo indigos also. So they're a newer soul group to here, incarnating to earth. Um, they're not a newer soul group in general, but um, conscious, self-aware, naturally intuitive, um, kind of need to be, be taught and retaught what the social rules are to govern society. That kind of was a hard, a hard learning lots of times as children. Um, they still don't really make sense to them, um, but they live within them. Um, often there's lots of experimenting and testing the rules as children um, to understand what true consequences are. Um, highly innovative, creative, quick thinkers. Okay. Um, and that's... Could you say the name of that race, please? Nihal. It's N-I-H-A-L. Okay. That's a new one on me. I love learning about new races. There's so many of them. Yeah. There's just yeah. so many of them. And sometimes, sometimes they'll stand before you. You don't know who you're looking at. Mm -hmm. And uh, mostly they will say, sometimes they'll laugh at you. They can show you their heart field. 
and uh, generally the galactic races I've never had much of a problem with. Um, so again, if you do see here or s just ask, ask, are you here for the highest light? Can you show me your heart field? What are you here for? That sort of thing. If you feel somebody around there with you, you are in control. You can ask these holy ones to step outside while you're sleeping. That's a good idea since their energy is a lot higher than ours. That's just my feeling. So we have um, a few more minutes if she's, are you okay with going over just a couple of minutes? Yeah, of course. Okay. So we have two people at the end here. And then I want to ask you one more time about the Akashic Records. I have a few more yeah. questions there. So our last two people will be Valerie and Ariane. So Valerie is 430-1958. And there's Lizzie and Melanie. Thank you for coming on, you guys. So what she's doing right now, what Tracy is doing, is figuring out what star race people are from. And then we are going to go back and uh, ask a couple questions about the Akashic Records. I just have a couple more questions at the end. If anybody has a question about the Akashic Records, how to find out who you are, what you've been up to, what's your job. Okay, so for Valerie, um, I'm getting Pleiadian. Okay. So Pleiadian, um, so people from the Pleiades are um, the sort of big vision people. So they're the idea, some of the, the big idea people. Um, one of the things they have difficulty with is pulling out an idea and ma making it go all the way to you know fruition. They kind of need other people to work on that with them. They are also a group that um, has a collective karmic debt or issues from um, all nearly destroying their planet. So one thing to check if you ever do get a reading is to make sure that you're not holding any of that karma that still needs to be completed. Um, if, if any of it can be released now to work on releasing that, that would be um, a good thing too. Um, I'm trying to think of what else I can say about Pleiadians being one myself. <laughs> but yeah, think, think you know, big, big ideas, great visionary stuff, um, mm -hmm. creative, um, whether that's with uh, creating arts or creating systems, things mm -hmm. like that, um, change makers. Mm -hmm. Big makers. A lot mm -hmm. of you here to help right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, awful lot of them. Okay, and so um, Ariane is 9 14, 1987. Oh, and Janet wants to know who was the other Mintakan? Might be nice to talk to someone from home. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I know when I meet other Arcturians, I'm Arcturian Syrian and who knows what else, but loved it, love to love them up. Um, the other man talking was Jamie. Okay. No way, Janet. I rather, rather. Yes, Jamie and Janet. Okay, Jamie and Janet. Awesome. Okay. So, uh, Ariane now, 914-1987. And let's see, where are we at here? Melanie is absolutely dying to know if she truly is. Hold on a second. Where'd you go, Melanie? Oh, if she's from Antares. No. Okay. Um, let me um, let me just tell you about um, Ariane. Let me tell you about um, who I got for you, <laughs> real quick first, and I'll, I'll go to the other in, uh, question about Antares. Um, so you are your soul group origination is actually um, an earth soul group, so an earther. Um, and what we say about earthers is that they're very connected to the earth and often do spiritual work that is earth based. Um, and they're they're very much um, involved in um, earth conservation. They can be involved a lot in lots of ways that way um, in environmental studies and things like that. Um, the negative side, or when people become unbalanced, they often hermit because they're very comfortable already in their earth, and they will they will kind of stay stay put or stay rooted. Which, being rooted, there's nothing wrong with being rooted. It's just when it's not working for for you, um, just like with any belief. Okay. Okay. And if that, yeah. Okay. And then um, Antares. Yes, so I'm not sure where you. Um, oh, she, okay. So she wants to know 
um, just curious about the folks from there came up. She does eye reading so she can see your mm -hmm. everything in your eye. So do you know much about the folks from there? Um, I'm just asking um, my guide team because I don't personally know, but um, they're telling me something like quick like lightning, like they're very fast. Their ships are very fast. They came from mm -hmm. far away from a very big star mm -hmm. um, or big star system. <laughs> it's like the now change makers. So um, they're here to um, basically, it's like they came into the earth to make a big impact very quickly. Mm -hmm. And, and I get I, golden builders too. It's like mm -hmm. I'm saying a Jenga and yeah. they, I don't know what that means. Golden builders. Who knows? It just, it just popped into, into my little pea brain. Okay. That is awesome. Thank you so much. And so she's almost over time kids. So those of you guys at the end, and I just have to say, Harmony, you and I have the same birthday, son of a gun. <laughs> So hopefully we can have Tracy on again and we can do this because I think this was really fascinating. Everybody does these types of readings differently and you'll go to different people and hear different things. It just means mm -hmm. they are seeing a little piece of you that the other person didn't see. Right. So every reader has a, has, um, you know, will have their own perception of your records and they may read the energy just slightly differently. Yeah, I'm talking about, so Valerie, I'm talking about uh, Melanie. She's the one with the eye readings. And then if you want a different type of eye reading, if you, if you want to know more about health, et cetera, I do know people who do that and do a very great job. Okay, so the Akashic Records. Okay, so there is just a lot written about that. Um, do you believe, let's see, um, who do you, who, when you go to your own Akashic Records, mm -hmm. I've had the question posed to me, who writes the Akashic? So if you go up there and you find stuff about you, who wrote it? Interesting. So um, the way that I perceive that is that it is set up like almost like a computer program mm -hmm. where our record, our records auto write mm -hmm. that they have a connection to our blueprint. And so every experience we have is auto, auto written into the record, like it's default. Mm -hmm. So it's every thought, everything that ever happened. And then of right. course, the halls of a mentee is more the same thing, but galactic inner earth and all that. So, so if I understand correctly, Akashic records are the earth, correct? So far as I understand it, yes. Okay. Because I only know one way to get into the halls of a mentee. It seems to work really great. <laughs> so if you, go, if you follow Tim Wilde, like I do, he's, he's got you in there in a second. You're on your way. You can ask all kinds of cool stuff. Yeah. So I'm always wondering, you know, me being such a clunky, clunky navigator, I just say, hey, can I see this? And it all kind of comes in. So I just wanted to make sure I knew who was, it feels like it's us. I mean, it generally is us. Yeah, I think it is us. Got to meet yourself. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then um, what about other people seeing our information up there? Can I go look um, at yours if I had a nefarious idea about sending you some bad juju? It's, it's possible that you could. So the, um, as you know, we were talking about at the beginning that we can all access our own records, but not everyone can access everyone else's records. Um, it's possible that someone could access records for the, um, you know, other people's records for the, for the purpose of that. However, there are guides in the records halls that mm -hmm. are working out for that sort of thing. Yeah. So that's not likely to happen unless we have some sort of way to have an energetic attachment. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and that being said, part of the clearing work that we, um, that we can do in the 3D is clearing programs that were placed from past lives or present life, entity attachments. Sometimes we come in with entities attached. We're already incarnated with those based on a, a past life consequence with an issue, um, negative thought forms, curses, familial and individual curses, all of those can be cleared as long as they're coming up as now, you know, time is now to clear them. Mm -hmm. So meaning there's no more karmic debt that we have to, to um, resolve before we move forward. Right. So um, some of those things just need the okay, okay to go. Exactly. And that's the thing. The time is now, everybody. I mean, we can be sitting around looking on our phone or we could be clearing stuff. Come on now. Let's do it. Right. <laughs> Melanie wants everybody to know that the, the halls of records are backed up by Google. 
<laughs> That's what was making me laugh earlier. Oh my goodness. <laughs> They're on the cloud. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. The real iCloud, yeah. So uh, Stephanie is saying she tried to go to the halls of a mentee. I saw white rose. Is that right? So that is a symbol that you're seeing. So that could be a uh, could be a guide. That could be that could be all kinds of stuff. So keep going back to try to answer it, and, and uh, we can do it together. I love to go there. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. It's really fun. Um, I thought you could only get in there if your heart was completely your heart's completely pure, babe. <laughs> <laughs> you can definitely get you definitely get in there. Absolutely. Don't be worried about that. We are beautiful yeah, works of God, multidimensional, lovely beings of light. Don't you worry about that at all, everybody. So oh yeah, and you're hi, a sovereign Astara. being. We love Astara. I'm gonna say hi to her. Hi. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, do you have anything you would like to say, my dear? Um, well just Thank you very much. There's so much, there's so much information um, that could be shared. And if anyone um, didn't get a chance to ask the question about soul group, absolutely um, private message me or email me at um, the word one. So it's one with all beings at gmail.com. And I will absolutely answer the soul group question for you. Um, if we didn't get to you here today. Um, and um, I, I love to do this work. I love to help people clear. And there's multiple different ways to do the clearing. And some of it's through affirmations and some of it's through another practitioner working on you. Mm -hmm. um, and always, always know that, um, that you are loved and that you are supported by your spirit guide team. And, um, and even the guides in the Akashic Records, your higher self. So everything is trial and error. Every action we take is um, trial and error. There's no one surefire way. There's no three steps to get to the, the, the end point, to manifestation, to get to ascension, to anything else. It's all a process. So um, in love. Absolutely. And I would say if anybody tries to tell you their way is the only way, it's not really true. No, no, not true. Everybody, including, I'd say, every last person I've ever met has a beautiful way of doing anything. I mean, have you ever talked to people and asked them how they clear energy? They'll tell you 400 different ways and it's all valid. It's all valid, you know, yeah. really, because um, we all come from different traditions and we are all, you know, mixed up like a dog's breakfast. Isn't that beautiful? Oh my gosh. That's the most beautiful thing about the human race. Mm -hmm. We're all different and, and we love that. Yeah. Uh, okay. So very good. So I would ask Tracy if you could put, oh, she, you put uh, Tracy's email in the feed because it's one, uh, O-N-E, one with all. Oh, yes, O-N-E, with all yeah. beings. Okay, one with all beings. Well, thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you so very much for taking time to explain. This was a, this was probably two, should have probably been two. <laughs> Because there's so much interesting stuff. And I just want to tell everybody, I'm going to take a break after Galactic Week, um, but we'll be coming back. And so I'd love to have you again. You're a very interesting guest. You've always got a lot of stuff and people love you. So thank you so much for coming on and uh, big love to Michael and the, the little stinker. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay. Bye everybody. Love you. Don't forget to come back tomorrow for uh, James Gilliland from the Iseti. He's an interesting guest, somebody that I've spoken to before on the radio, and he'll tell you all about what is out there? That's going to be our question. Okay. Love you all. Good night.